factory performance trucks were a relatively new concept for consumers to wrap their heads around. There was the Little Red Express in the late 70s, and even before that, Dodge put a 426 Hemi found in B-body Plymouths in a D100 back in 64 and 65. Less than 50 of these were produced, and even the Little Red Express was short-lived. So when GM came out with the 454 SS in 1990, it turned a lot of heads. It was the lightest iteration of the GMT 400 platform at the time. By that, I mean it was two-wheel drive, had a short bed, and was a single cab. Obviously, we can see its cosmetic changes, but that wasn't all GM did. The 454 SS featured upgraded front sway bars, Bilstein shocks, thicker roll bars, heavy-duty radiator, and a quicker steering ratio. Yes, these trucks had a 454 cubic inch motor in them, or a 7.4 liter V8, good for 230 horsepower and 385 foot-pounds of torque. This motor has undergone many changes over its lifetime. I'm not all too familiar with them, but I do know that in 1987, these motors featured an electronic fuel injection system, which gave it all the more power. Initially, for 1990, these trucks were only offered in onyx black. They came standard with 15-inch chrome wheels, halogen composite headlights, and fog lamps. Interior was all red with cloth bucket seats, and these trucks were well equipped with options like AC and power windows. Only a single exhaust system was featured this year, which is pretty disappointing in my opinion, but we will revisit this later. A little less than 14,000 units were sold in 1990, with a base price of $18,295, which is pretty good selling 14,000 units, but as we will see, these numbers did not stick over the years. In 1991, Chevy made several performance enhancements to the 454 SS. The 454 gained 25 more horsepower and 20 more foot-pounds of torque. A new 4-speed automatic transmission replaced the 3-speed and now came with dual exhaust and a tachometer in the gauge cluster. Even with all of these improvements, apart from the gas mileage, less than a thousand of them rolled off the assembly line. 1992 would add a few more changes. Summit White and Victory Red were new color options. I think they should have had these options before though. Some people don't want to be limited to one color. The base price also increased to $20,585. GM sold a little less than 1,400 units in 92, and then for 93, less than 900. The main Achilles heel for this truck was that it wasn't ever offered in manual. And to me, the people buying this truck would have wanted the option to choose their preferred transmission. Ford did not like the 454 SS getting all this attention. And in 1993, they introduced their own performance truck, the Ford Lightning. Unfortunately, I'm saving the Lightning along with a few other trucks for a part two. If I included all of the performance trucks of the 90s, this would be one long video. During the production of the 454 SS, there was one truck in particular that stole the show. And again, that is for a different time. Dodge Dakota RT. Before we move to the second generation Dakotas with the infamous RT package, it's important to educate ourselves with a little background on the Dakota name. Initially, Dakotas were powered competitively with the competition. Nothing crazy, apart from the Shelby Dakota, which was unique for its time. However, this truck was only offered in 1989, just missing the cutoff. In 1991, the introduction of the 5.2 Magnum V8 made this one impressive truck for its class. It cranked 170 horsepower for a truck of its size. Quote, a mid-sized Dodge Dakota with a new optional 230 horsepower Magnum V8 outpowers, outhauls, and just plain outpulls even full-size 5-liter V8s from Ford and Chevy. Unquote. A year after the introduction of the 5.2, the 90 degree V configuration was updated, and these engines now had multi-port electronic fuel injection. Horsepower numbers jumped to 230. At the time, it was seen as one of the most radical in its class, as it remained the only truck in its class with an optional V8. The second gen Dakota RTs had the 5.9 Magnum V8, the same engine found in the Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited 5.9. That car is hardly 
ever mentioned. I only just found out about it a couple months ago. I mean, it was only offered for a year, but still, I'm, I'm kind of shocked with myself. Around 240 horsepower and 345 foot-pounds of torque made it into a heavy-duty electronic four-speed automatic. I say around 240 because it really depends on the year. Dodge was always making these little tweaks to the 5.9, so some will have like 250, some will have 235, and some will have 240. It really just depends on the year. And unfortunately, I'm pretty sure no 5.9s were offered in manual. Like the 454 SS, this package wasn't just cosmetic. The suspension was built with a focus of on-road handling as opposed to hauling. Limited slip differential for improved traction and quicker starts, upgraded brakes, performance exhaust, bucket seats, and a few other bells and whistles. Cosmetically, they had a unique exterior package. Front and rear color keyed bumpers and fenders, exclusive 17 inch wheels, 2 inches lower from stock, and some unique decals. Exclusive paint colors were offered, flame red, black, intense blue, and deep amethyst. Very few were solar yellow as these were only produced for one year and some forms say it was by accident, like they accidentally released this code or whatever, but I'm not 100% sure on that. RT models were only offered in two-wheel drive, which makes it really nice for burnouts. And two body styles, regular or club cab, got the RT package. In terms of sales numbers, consumers preferred the club cab over the regular cab by more than 40% each year. Over its six-year production cycle, less than 17,000 Dakota RTs were sold. That comes out to a little over 2,800 units sold each year, which isn't amazing, but it's not awful. The Dakota RT would return yet again in 2006 and 2007. Just, there were no performance enhancements made, it was all cosmetic. Chevy S10 SS the SS package was offered between 1994 and 1998. The 4.3 Vortec V6, optional in regular S10s, was standard for the SS. It really depends on the year, but these engines produce between 180 and 200 horsepower. Consumers could pick between three color options, black, red, and white. Before 1996, the SS package wasn't really impressive. It was mainly cosmetic, it had special wheels, SS badging, a special grill, and fog lamps. It wouldn't be until the 96 model year that these trucks started seeing improvements. ZQ8 sports suspension, Bilstein shocks, larger stabilizer bars, limited slip differential, it was 2 inches lower, and rear sway bars. I believe the S10 Extremes featured a lot of these improvements as well, and actually that's what replaced the SS in 1999. All SS S10s from 94 to 98 were all regular cab. Consumers could option in a step side from 1996 until 98. Personally, not my favorite. I prefer the regular cab, but you know, that's just me. Some of them had the bench seat in them, while others had bucket seats. Again, it really depends on the year. For 1994, they sold over 5,500 S10Ss, but every year after that, it was less than 2,000. GM supercharged the 3.8 found in the Park Avenue Ultra. Should they have supercharged the 4.3? If they did, would the price turn away buyers? I don't know. I'm just a little disappointed with this truck, but I don't hate it by any means. I think it's, you know, if I saw one on the road, I would point it out and find it very interesting. Ram SST. Before the Ram SRT10 with that Viper engine, there was the Ram SST. In 1996, the Dodge Ram served as the pace car for the Indianapolis 500 alongside the Viper GTS. To celebrate this achievement, Dodge offered an Indianapolis 500 pace truck that was offered for a limited time. Just 2,800 units of these sold and were priced at around $20,000. Typically, these special edition pace car trims are offered for only a year. Well, because it did so well, Dodge essentially kept it alive. This time, with a brand new name, the Ram SST, which was introduced a year later. An SST stood for Super Sport Truck. These trucks have dual racing stripes, performance engine tuning, special 17-inch aluminum wheels, sports tuned exhaust, special tachometer, fog lights, lowered suspension, performance tires, and color keyed paint scheme with matching bumper, grille, and lower fascia. On top of all of this, the SSTs included all standard features found on the Ram SLT. Under the hood, we have the 5.9 Magnum making 245 horsepower and 330 foot-pounds of torque. Standard 1500s were making around 175 horsepower for reference. There were a few color options for the SST. Black with silver stripes, 
emerald with silver stripes, red with silver stripes, and white with blue stripes. If you wanted the iconic Viper paint scheme, then you would have to buy the Indy 500 edition as it wasn't offered for the SSTs. The red was picked the least, while the black was picked the most. I have to say, these trucks are awesome, and nice ones go for a good amount of money. A couple of years later, the Ram SRT10 was introduced along with the Ram Daytona. It is now time for the tier list. We have nothing in F, nothing in C. In B tier, we have the S10 SS. I guess I was just wanting a little bit more performance. Maybe just some engine tweaking, a new exhaust system. In A tier, we have the Dakota RT, 454 SS, and Ram SST. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. My previous video about like the worst 80s cars from GM, it did really well. Um, so we probably have some new people watching. I really want to try and make videos that are appealing for most people. Obviously, it's impossible, you know, to make videos that everybody likes. So I might have like a system where one week I'll do 80s, one week I'll do 90s, and one week I'll do 2000s. Um, and maybe I might include the 70s. We'll have to see. But I just want to make sure that for the most part people are, you know, subscribing and enjoying what they see and not just want to see a specific video, if that makes sense. So I'm going to try to not have it so diluted on 90s cars because that's what i did earlier but anyway i'm rambling on um thank you so much for watching um it's i'm only gonna get better from here